Hi everyone, this is Auntie Katie. Did you have a nice time celebrating Christmas? Well, today is the last Sunday of the year 2020. And so I want us to prepare for the year 2021. And I want you to learn this word called providence. Okay, so let's open with the word of prayer and we'll get into it. Dear God, we thank you for bringing us through another year. And we're excited to start another year. Well, we're excited because you are with us. I pray that today you would open our hearts and our ears and our minds to know you and to love you more. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, this word providence is important because I want you to remember it in the new year in 2021. Now, the word providence means the care and control of God using ordinary ways. So God is taking care of us and controlling everything using ordinary ways. So we think of like uh, God takes care of us by miracles. Something sp spectacular happens. And that's, sometimes God does that too through a miracle. But a lot of times God is working through ordinary ways. So ways that we think of as like coincidence or, oh, that just happened. Actually, that is the providence or the hand of God controlling things in order to um, accomplish his will, in order for his will to happen. So actually, the providence of God is pretty amazing, isn't it? He has to move every little part, people, timing, just right in order for his will to work out. A miracle, he does it right away, and that's pretty amazing too. So we often don't think of providence of God as amazing because it seems like ordinary or, or just a coincidence. But today in the book of Esther, we'll see how God really shows his providence in a powerful way. And we see that the providence of God is powerful. Now, there are two books in the Bible that does not have the word God in it. One of them is Esther. The other book is the Song of Songs. Those two books do not have the word God in it. But we know in the book of Esther that even though God, the word is not in there, we know that God's hand was throughout that book. His providence was at work in a powerful way. So let's take a look at Esther today. Now, oh, there's another word I want you to know before we start getting into the book of Esther. And that is the word Jew or Jewish. The Jewish people are God's chosen people. Like from Abraham, Moses, King David, God called together a nation of people and we call them the Jews. And God's plan is that he would show himself to the Jews and then through the Jews, we, we the rest of the world, would know God through the Jews. And so when we read the Old Testament, things that happen to the Jewish people, uh, we learn about God through them in that way. Okay, So that's going to be important because we're going to talk about the Jewish people. Now, let's go ahead and start with the book of Esther. The book starts off that it happened a long time ago. This is a true story from the Bible that happened in history a long time ago that in the country of Persia. And the king of Persia got really mad at his queen. So he says, I'm going to get myself a new queen. Now, you know, that's not the right thing to do, you know. But this king, he doesn't know God and he doesn't follow God's ways. But we will see that in God's providence, even a king who doesn't know him, uh, is God is going to use this king to accomplish his purposes. So in God's providence, when the king went out to look for a new queen, out of all the girls in the, in the king, uh, king's kingdom in the whole country, the king chooses a Jewish girl to be his queen, Queen Esther. I know many of you already know the story, so follow along as we look at this uh, book of Esther. Now, Esther is an ordinary person. In fact, her parents probably died. She's an orphan, and she was raised by her cousin Mordecai. So Mo Mordecai and Esther and her family are Jews. And in God's providence, Esther, a Jew, became the queen of Persia. Now, one day, in the Bible, it tells us that Mordecai happened to be sitting outside and overheard two of the king's guards making a plan to kill the king. Now, it seems like a coincidence that Mordecai seems to be sitting there and heard the plan, but we know that it is God's providence that Mordecai heard the plan. He told his cousin Esther, who is the queen, and then the queen told the king. The king arrested those two guys, and the king's life was saved. Now, this is going to be important later. 
So remember that Mordecai saved the king's life. Now everything was going okay for the Jews until something bad really happened right here. Now one of the king's top officials, his name is Haman, he was so proud of himself that he's such an important person in the kingdom uh, in Persia. And he told, he said, everybody, when you see me, you have to bow down to me. Well, Mordecai, he's a Jew. He worships the one true God. He didn't want to bow down to Mordecai. He doesn't want to worship another man. He only worships the true God. That made Haman really mad at Mordecai that he wouldn't bow down to him. In fact, Haman says, I want to kill all the Jewish people, including Mordecai. So he convinced the king to give him permission to kill all the Jews in the country. And Haman set a date that on this day, all the people can go out and kill all the Jews and take all their stuff. They can take their house, take the money and kill them. Isn't that terrible? Now, how is God going to save his people, the Jewish people? How is God going to work a miracle to save his people? Well, God does work to save his people through providence, using ordinary ways. We're going to see how God uses ordinary ways to show his great power to save his people. So Mordecai told Esther, you're the queen. You must convince the king to save us, to stop this. Otherwise, you and I and all our family will be killed. But Esther said, it's against to go against the law to talk to the king. And he hasn't asked to talk to me. If he doesn't ask to talk to me and I go talk to him, he could kill me. Now remember, when the king was looking for a new queen, out of all the people that he could have picked to be his queen, it was God's providence that he chose Queen Esther, a Jew. So Mordecai said, Esther, Maybe you were chosen to be queen for such a time as this. Maybe you are, you are the queen so that you can be, you can talk to the king and save all of us. Do you think Esther would do it? Well, let's turn to Esther chapter 4. And this is what Esther says. Turn to your Bible chapter 4. I'm going fast here, so stop the video if you need to and go to chapter 4 verse 16. Esther says to Mordecai, Go, assemble all the Jews who are found in Susa, that's the city where they live, and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my maidens, that means her servants, will also fast in the same way. And when they fast, don't eat and drink, that means they are praying. And thus I will go to the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. That means Go and fast and pray for three days. And then I will go see the king, even though it's against the law. And if he kills me, he kills me. Then I'm dead. See, Esther was willing to take the chance. Well, let's see what happens. After the three days of fasting, Esther got dressed up and went to talk to the king. By God's providence, the king was in a good mood. And the king said to Esther, come on in and talk to me. He did not kill her. Oh, and in fact, the king says, what can I do for you, Queen Esther? I'll do anything you want. Now, this doesn't, doesn't this look like a perfect opportunity for Esther to tell the king to stop the killing of her people? Do you think Esther asked the king right away? Well, no. Esther said, I want to invite the king and Haman to a special dinner. Well, I... Don't know why Esther didn't ask the king right away then, but you, we know that in God's providence, he is in control. So the next day at the dinner, the, the king asked Esther again, what can I do for you? I'll give you anything you want. Another great opportunity, isn't it? Shouldn't Esther ask the king now? No, Esther didn't. Esther said, I, I want to invite the king and Haman to another special dinner tomorrow night. Now you might be thinking, oh, Esther, you wasted two opportunities. New two chances you could have asked the king. He said he'll do anything for you. Why didn't you ask the king then? Well, I don't know why Esther didn't ask the king then, but in God's providence, God has something even more in, in, uh, in plan that you and I couldn't have thought of. Because that night after that dinner, in God's providence, in God's plan, 
the king couldn't sleep. And he says, bring me the book that tells me all the things that's been happening. The, the, uh, uh, that's been happening. I'll read that book and maybe that will put me to sleep. Well, in God's providence, while reading that book, he read about the part when Mordecai saved his life. Remember at the beginning I told you Mordecai saved his life? And the king read that and he says, oh, I forgot about that. Did I ever give a reward to Mordecai? And no, the records did not show that he did anything with Mordecai. Now, right then, Haman was just coming in to the palace to talk to the king. And in God's providence, Haman happened to walk by and the king says, hey, Haman, come here, I wanna ask you something. Now, of course, we know it's just not coincidence. It was God's providence that Haman was right there. You know why Haman was right there? He wanted to talk to the king to kill Mordecai right away. He was so mad at Mordecai that night. He says, I'm going to go ask the king and, and give me, get permission to kill Mordecai right away. That was what Haman had in mind. But in God's providence, something else happened instead. The king called Haman over. Come talk to me. And this is one of my favorite parts about God's providence. This, this is where... Tur everything turns around. Turn to chapter 6 with me. In chapter 6, starting with verse 6, Haman came in and the king said to him, What is to be done to the man for the man whom the king desires to honor? That means the king says, I want to honor somebody. What should I do for him? And Haman says to him, uh, Haman says to himself, he's thinking, Well, who, who would the king want to honor more than me? He thinks the king wants to honor me. So Haman said to king, well, for the man whom the king desires to honor, let him put on a royal robe, which the king has worn, and ride the horse, which the king has ridden, and on the head, a royal crown will be placed, and let the robe and the horse be handed over to one of the king's most noble princes, and let them array the man whom the king desires to honor, and lead him on horseback throughout the whole city, and proclaim this is the man whom the king honors. See, he, he thought it's going to be him. He wanted to show off wearing the king's robe and the king's crown and be shown off the whole, whole city that the king's honoring him. But instead, who did the king want to honor? And the king says, okay, that sounds good. Take quickly, the king said to Haman, take the horse and the robe just as you said and do it for Mordecai the Jew and Haman is going to be one holding the horse he's going to be the servant honoring Mordecai to everybody God's plan and God's timing is wonderful isn't it how God's providence worked to turn everything around his enemy Haman became the servant to Mordecai now Let's go on to the second, the next day of the second banquet that Esther prepared for King, the king and Haman. Is he, do you think Esther's going to have another chance to ask the king? Do you think the king is going to be in a good mood? Well, in God's providence, at the dinner, the king asked Esther again, What can I do for you? I'll give you anything you want. Wow. In God's providence, king asked it again. And this time... Esther said, yes, can you, somebody, Esther told the king that she's a Jew and that someone had made a law to kill all the Jews, including herself and all her family who are Jews. Well, the, when the king heard that, he says, who wants to do that? And where is this person who wants to do that? And Esther said, it's Haman and he's sitting right here. <laughs> Well, I think you know the rest of the story. And the rest of the story is that the king ordered Haman to be killed and the plan to kill all the Jews was stopped. God indeed saved his people, didn't he? He saved the Jewish people. But it's not through a spectacular miracle with angels or something like that. It is through God's providence, working in the little details, down to the every little detail of timing and places that worked out God's perfect plan. Now, there's more to this story of uh, Esther. I want you to read it with your family, read it in the, in the Bible together and get the whole picture, how wonderful God uses, how God 
uh, uses his every little thing to work out his plan. You know, have you ever wondered why God doesn't just stop the virus? You know, every time I think about things going on in the world, I think of the book of Esther and I think, why doesn't God make everything work out perfectly? Everybody be nice. Can God do a miracle and just give me what I want? And maybe you might be wondering, oh, why did I get this certain teacher this year at school? Or maybe some of you might be even wondering, why was I born into this family and not into another family or something like that? Well, you know, Esther, she probably wondered why out of all the girls in the country, she was picked to be queen. Maybe the king was wondering, how come I can't sleep tonight? <laughs> I can sleep every night. How come I can't sleep tonight? Maybe there are many things that we don't understand. But when we look at the whole picture, it all makes sense, doesn't it? When we look at the whole picture, now we see why Esther, a Jewish girl, was picked to be the queen. Now we know after everything happened, then we know why the king couldn't sleep that night. Now we know why Mordecai happened to hear the guards um, with a plot to kill the king. And when we look back at everything, we can see God's providence. He put all the pieces together. Sometimes God does a big miracle. Sometimes he does the miracles through providence. Everything that we think is just a coincidence. So when things are happening, when you pray and you ask God to do something and you think, well, God's not doing it. I don't see the miracle. I want you to remember this, boys and girls. Don't ever think that God is not there. He is there. In his providence, he is working everything according to his great power through the ordinary things in life. And don't ever think that God is not powerful enough to do something. You think, well, maybe can't, God just can't do a miracle to help us right now. No, God is powerful. He, his providence is controlling every little bit of detail to help us and to give him the most glory. God is always providentially at work. He's able to move people and circumstances. He is in control. The book of Esther gives us a high view of God. Don't ever think that God can't do anything. God is almighty. He is in control. He is powerful through every circumstance, every little detail that happens. So the book of Esther gives us the confidence that we can trust in him. Just wait and trust him. Our life's not over yet. My life is not over yet. God is still working things out for me and I don't understand it. But I know that one day I will look back and understand everything. Just like when we look back at Esther, ah, we understand the hand of God, the providence of God that was so perfect just in the right way. And when I look back in my life one day and you look back one day, you think, oh, that was beautiful. That's how God worked. So wait, wait and trust in God. God is always at work. He is still at work right now, even when it doesn't seem to make sense. And it will all make sense at the end. So in the year 2021, I'm going to remind you of this word providence. Okay, God is at work providentially. And that is the a great word to remember for 2021 that God is working through ordinary ways. He is in control. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, what a wonderful reminder that you, God, are in control. You know everything and you know the very best. Even when it doesn't make sense to us or even when we think like the timing doesn't seem to be right. Why can't you do something? But Lord, we know that you are. And we know that it makes sense at the end. So, Lord, we trust you. We want to go through into the new year trusting that you are in control and that you love us. So, Lord Jesus, we love you and we trust you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.